Chapter 17, verse number 1, the Bible reads, And when Abram was 90 years old and 9, 24 years have gone by since we started looking it back in chapter 12. He was 75. Now he's 99 years old. 24 years, God still hasn't given him a child. Okay, but he's made all these promises to him along the way. He's been promising, 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 right? 99 years old, it says, The Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Abram is continuing to see and communicate with God this whole time. This isn't some, you know, oh man, now God's telling me to break into this house. And now God's telling you, know, as we see the lunatics of our day doing and claiming. This isn't the relationship that Abram had with God at all. Not even close. You can't just relate what happens in chapter 22 with these crazy psychos out there that just want to claim God told them to do these really bizarre, weird stuff. Okay, it's not, it's not the same thing at all, which is why we're, going, we're getting the context of everything about Abram's relationship with the Lord. Verse 2, And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. God makes a covenant. He's making a promise with Abraham and saying, again, I'm going to multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face and God talked with him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham for a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful and I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. Now, and then, of course, God gives him the seal of circumcision. And at this point, uh, Abraham already has, has uh, had Ishmael as a son, where he's trying to take matters in his own hand. And he, and he lays with his handmaid, with Hagar, to try to have a child through her. But that's not the promise that God made unto him. God's not counting Ishmael as being his seed. God is, that is not the seed that God promised unto Abraham. And when he's thinking in the flesh, you know, the handmaid, that was not a miraculous birth. The handmaid must be much younger and in childbearing years to be able to give birth to Ishmael. It was a completely a work of the flesh that he had that child, but that is still not the promise that God is referring to. And he makes that clear. He's promised over and over again. We've seen all these various chapters and references Talking about Abraham's seed and being blessed. Jump down to verse number 17 there in chapter 17. The Bible says, Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is an hundred years old? Because he just received the news again. You're going to have a child. And this time it's much more specific. Besides God oh, just saying, I'm going to bless your seed. This is going to happen. He says, you know, basically next year, this year, you know, next year at, this, at the time, your wife's going to conceive and, and bear a child. And he's like, I'm 99 years old. I'm going to be 100 years old. So he's at 100, you know, he's kind of just saying like, who's ever heard of a 100-year-old man having a newborn baby, right? Like, I'm going to have a, ba a child at 100 years old? And sa shall Sarah that is 90 years old bear? So his wife is 90 years old. Now, at this point in human history, men were living a little bit longer, kind of than we do now, but not, it's not like it was pre-flood. Pre-flood, you've got people living 400, 500, 600, 700, 800 years. But after the flood, that, the, the people's, you know, human beings' lifespan greatly diminished to what we know pretty much today. Okay, a, a relative same amount of years, you know, and people are always saying, oh, yeah, you know, our modern technology, we live so much longer. We live to, you know, 76, 77, 80 years. It's like, that's exactly the way it was after the flood. 
with people in the Bible times anyways. Just because you had a, a period of years in between where, you know, called the Dark Ages, where people were just kept really ignorant and, and didn't live as long because they lived in filth and, and didn't practice, you know, what God has taught through the Bible. Yeah, they didn't live as long, but we see throughout history and in the Bible and people who follow the Lord, no, they lived to be normal ages. And this is, the reason he's bringing this up is this is, this is an old age. Abraham's 100 years old. Sarah's 90 years old. And yeah, think about a 100-year-old man and a 90-year-old woman today giving birth to a newborn baby. You don't see that happening because this was a miraculous birth. So he says uh, in verse 18, And Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. He's saying, no, Sarah's going to have this child and you're going to name him Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. So all these promises that Abraham's been given, God is making it clear. This is going to be through Isaac. The, the promise is passing through the seed. You know, he had Ishmael when, when he lapsed in faith. And was working through the flesh, but that was never God's intent. It's always been Isaac was the plan. Isaac was a promise. And see, we don't under always understand God's timing, but God has a reason and a purpose for it. And even though in the flesh, you know, Abraham and Sarah are thinking like, well, I mean, we still don't have a child and now I'm getting really old. We got to do something. I mean, we need to try to keep God's promises. No, God will keep his promises. You don't need to take it into your own hand. He didn't tell you to do that. Even when it seems impossible. But see, I think that's the reason why God had that plan. Because he wanted it to be impossible so that he gets all the glory and the honor and that it really is a big deal. See, if, it was, if God just gave the promise through Ishmael, where, where is really the, the you know, God in all of that? That's just something anybody can do. Go out and have this, this, this adulterous relationship or you know, take another wife, a polygamous relationship, and, and have a child. That was never God's plan. That is not what God wanted him to do. But having a child at night for a woman at 90 years old, a man at 100 years old, that's unheard of. That's miraculous. And if we see how much representation and symbolic meaning is going into what God is going to do in the future, who else had a miraculous birth in the Bible? Jesus Christ. Right? Was born of a virgin. 